Hey everybody, what's up? It's Chris. Uh, here we are in my messy basement once again, working on the old XServe raid. And uh, what I got going on here is these. These are the StarTech.com IDE to SATA converters. Uh, as you know in the past, we had these in my previous video, these Chinese knockoffs. So, what's going on here? I apologize in advance. This video is not going to be in high def because I am using my older uh, SD JVC camcorder. But I have a tripod on it, so hopefully it will work out a little better than me shaking. Um, plus I can hold on. So what I did was I took all of my IDE to SATA adapters out. I was getting a lot of errors. Um, so this is it. This is the StarTech um, part number is IDE to SAT. It's uh, right here. And it is a a smaller IDE to SATA converter with a Micro Four Molex to the regular pass-through for your IDE drive. Um, they're brand new. I got them off eBay, two for twenty bucks each. So let's see. In the package, we have a box, a manual. That I'm not going to read and let's unbox this here. Let's see what we actually have. Okay, so here we are, and uh, look at the size difference. In this, so I won't have to worry about that bumping anymore because just the size alone that does look like it has a jumper for master slave cable select. That's what it says cable master slave. It's set on master. I'm gonna go ahead and move this in advance to cable select. Um, looks like this will use the four pin Molex header off of the original tray here. You know, let's go ahead and just pop one of these covers off. So here we go. I'm going to pull this little cable forward as best I can. And, uh, you know, it would be nice is if I could just go directly right off of this header and bypass this little guy altogether. But it doesn't look like I'm going to do that. So I'm going to plug this Molex in like this. Uh, this IDE. Ooh, which one's pin one? Pin one is in the corner. Make sure my little negative doohickey's down. Okay, that's that. Oh, that's a lot nicer. And now our drive of choice will be um, here's a 500 gig uh, Samsung, and uh, I'll just click this in here. Nice. I can actually have room. I can just the connection quality. Oh, that's a lot better to hear that. So there we go. That's pretty much it. Now, since this guy's smaller, I don't really even need this because I'm not converting it the other way. But for now, I'm just gonna do a tuck. All right, I'm just gonna tuck all this crap in, and I'm gonna go total ghetto here and just use some electrical tape because this will flop around. You know what? Let's see. If I put the tray on, and not put it on correctly again, you gotta line these little suckers up perfectly, or they get picky. Okay, so there we are in the tray. Uh, this is down the power. I did still keep the electrical tape on the bottom of the tray just to prevent any grounding. But this is so much nicer. And look at the profile. You can see that. The profile in here is lower than an original three and a half inch IDE. I hope I'm centered on the screen. Yeah. So let's uh let's just put some tape on this side just to kind of keep these cables in check here. You know what? I might even just kind of tape the cables. Let me take the drive out real quick. Ooh, that's a lot nicer. A lot nicer. I'm just going to run a little ream of tape around here. And if you uh, don't own a pair of these little electrical scissors, sometimes they use them in the medical field also. But these were at Lowe's for, I don't know, 
five or six dollars in the electronic section where all the multimeters are. These things are great. They're super sharp, good crisp action. They work really well. So enough about my dumb scissors. Let's plop this back in. It is on cable select. Like I said, um, let's see how this is going to hold. If I well, I guess for the test, this might be good. Maybe as a safety, I'll put some tape over here just to kind of hold it in. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of this is the just winging it part here. I'm not going to run the tape on the ridge because I know that does come in contact with the rail. But just for my own sanity. I mean, this is holding nicely because of the cable. So, uh, yeah, here we go. I'm wearing my customary pajama pants again. Um, let's see if this even reaches. I do have it plugged in because the battery was totally out. All right. Whoops. I hope I raise the camera up. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to go in uh, this tray right here. This is disc number six. This was giving me some issues before. Right now it's just a blank. So have the blank remove the 500 gig the IDE to SAT adapter in. Look at that, like butter. And there's my orange light. The RAID should start rebuilding actually in a second. Oh, this was a previous RAID job drive. Okay, so it's in there. It's orange. Why is it orange? Is it failed? Probably not. What happens is this. When you insert a drive, zoom out. Okay. When you insert a drive into the uh, the Xserve, and it was part of a previous array, which I've been playing around with this forever. Um, what's going to happen is this. It'll have a little quick crazy mark, and you can join it back in. So, oh, it's degraded. Wonderful. Oops. I always do that. Okay, so we need to make a drive available for use. Select this drive. See? Oh, can you see that? I'm sorry. Alright. So what I did was this. I, uh, let me cancel this. Okay, so the drive right here, I went into the arrays, right? I'm holding the camera again. Um, I went into utilities and I said make drive available for use. Click continue. Choose the drive. Say I understand. Make available. Now it should go should should go green and orange. And this array should go to a status of oh, rebuilding. There we go. Okay, so let's check the XR raid real quick. And Green and orange, that's a good thing. Now, it did that before. The problem I had with this, I raise these tripods up a little bit. Once again, I will get this camera stuff down one of these years. Okay, I think this works. Alright, and fix the angle. Okay, maybe I can tilt this a little bit. Alright, I hope that's good for you. Okay, so what happened before is, yes, it's rebuilding. It's a 2.73 terabyte. Um, each individual drive is a 5, a 5, a 5, a 5, a 5, a 5, and my 750. Um, I just, I was having issues with the uh, IDE to SATA, so I put original uh, Apple Drive module IDE in here. So this one is the SATA. You just saw me put it in. I will take it back out after it's done rebuilding, power down the RAID, so I don't have to do the rebuild thing again. Oh, wow. It's done already? Oh, wait a minute. Die. Okay. So, um, yeah. Once it gets done rebuilt, I'll power this down and then take that drive out, secure this correctly. I want to put a screw in one of the drive chassis. I was just so excited to get these converters in just to see what's going on. Um, I think this might even be an ID one of the old ID to say this too. Well, let's check it. Okay. Data was lost during a rebuild operation. Yeah, that's fine. Because I'm rebuilding that drive. 
but this six one well, failed. Huh? Oh yeah, I, I forgot I said, hey, I'm gonna blow this drive away. But look, I'm not getting those crazy errors. Let me clear the event log here. It was so nice not having the stupid blinking orange light on the front of the unit. So I'm back. Um, check this out. So this is an updated layout. Now, the StarTech, very small. You'll see I have a little cable bend here. Um, but it still fits. It fits fine. Uh, this is with the ADM cover off. What I did was I kind of twisted it a little bit to shove this on the side so I could put one screw in right here. Okay. Um, now, I did use some snips and I cut the extra 4-pin Molex off of this so I didn't have all these cables. This wraps around perfectly. It's in there secure. It ain't going anywhere. Um, so I'm putting the uh, drive cover on. Turn the camera around. So see me do that. Okay. Let's see here. All right. So now I'm just going to put the cover back on. These are always a joy to line up. Make sure this little guy is out of the way. And oh, in case you haven't noticed, this thing has like a little clip it sits on. And then it kind of just folds over and clicks in. So let me do that with it sitting on my lap. Oh, it's still a pain in the ass. Precisely fit all this crap in here. All right. Click, click. In there. Okay. So here it is with the the cable on, and you'll see that. Uh, so I zoomed out. So it sits fine. It's below the uh, grade of the cover. So when it goes in, um, I do have it really, really close on this side. I mean, really close. But it's not causing any issues. Um, for the original one I just put in, I left it on cable. So I moved the jumper to cable select. This one I'm leaving on master, and I'm just going to put it in and see how it works. I'm going to tuck this cable around so it's not sticking out. And I could even put a piece of tape on it, like I should do. Maybe I'll just put a piece of tape on the hard drive, but or across the uh, the cable piece. So from the other video which I'm going to splice into this one um, what happened was I get all these errors on uh, when I was re building the raid so there we go there's a piece of electrical tape this is still taped in um, so that it ain't going nowhere um, on the previous drive I put in I was getting all these errors about data loss during rebuild there was nothing on the raid I mean I had some junk on there I just I, excuse me erased it. Uh, I was still getting them when I put the drive back in with nothing on the array. So uh, what I ended up doing was I have this USB to uh, SATA adapter and it's self-powered. Just plug it on a USB port. I mounted it on OS 10 and uh, just erased the drive. Did a GUID partition, uh, named it 500G and stuck it in and no more error. Um, so I decided, you know what, we're going to do fresh here, and we're going to blow the uh, blow the array away, and we're going to see if the um, the quick or whatever it's called uh, raid now or whatever it is, where you can initialize the drive in the background and get it to mount instantly. So this is going to be drive seven in the upper controller. Once again, I apologize. I am still getting this camera thing in. So here we go. I'll just do it so you can see the lights. So we're all green, minus that flash. Um, I do still have some orange on the right, but for now, drive seven. There we go. This is a 500 gig 
Hitachi. Uh, yeah, we'll see. So once you can get it into the trays, I mean, it slides right in. So there's our orange. I'm going to go wait for our green, and then we'll go back up to the desktop here. I didn't format that drive. Okay. It's taking its good old time. Come on, baby. All right, green, finally. Okay. So what we'll do, uh, get that butt up here. Zoom back out. <sighs> Sit your back on my desk and arch this up. Okay, so here we go. Drive 7 is a spare uh, HGST Hitachi. Um, 882 power on hours. Not too bad. The other one has like 700 uh, unknown. But when I hooked it up to the Apricorn USB to SATA, it did uh, report 700 and something. Now, I run a utility, which is called Smart Utility. It runs up here in your dock bar. Um, yes, I know I have a couple that are failing. But you'll see there's the 500 gig HGST overall status passed. A couple failings, but they're just because of age, old age. Um, so you can launch the smart utility, and what it does, it'll tell you power on hours, 39 hours, uh, temperature. Failing, it's got 5,000 hours. There's no bad sectors. This one has 30, so it's just my carbon copy cloner. But this is a great utility. It's a smart utility. It's from what is it? Volations of Volatins Software. And uh, you can just Google it. I bought this one. It was like eh, $20, and it works really well because there is no native smart on the. Uh, I mean, there is in system info, but it's nothing grandioso. All right, so let's go like this. So I told you I blew the array away. Um, now I have a remote desktop here. I want to go ahead and restart my Xserve. Bloop. Okay, slide that out of the way. So while that is uh, rebooting, I'm going to go ahead and prep for the array. Let's make sure our event log's okay. Disk seven's online. That was when I pulled the other one out, um, moved it to disk 8 after I put the screw in it. So let's go ahead and clear the event log. And we're green across the board on controllers, drives, modules, fans. Come on. No, it wasn't until I said that. Oh, delay, the server is rebooting. You probably just heard the power max sound. So we're waiting on controller 1 to come back online. And controller 2. There we go. Reconnecting to the Xserve. I apologize, my videos are always so lengthy. But I like to try and get as much content in as I can. Just for informative wise. Okay, so we're back on the Xserve here. Now. These are my regular drives on the uh, expansion card. So I have five drives right now. Six terabyte for Time Machine, a three, a three, a 1.5, and a 120 gig SATA. So if I run disk utility on the Xserve, we're just gonna see those drives that it has. There's no Xserve RAID, anything in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just slide this out of the way. We're gonna go Make sure we're green. Green, green. Okay. We're going to go create array. Whoops. Let me see where I'm doing here. Let me bring this down. Bring this down. Okay. So we click create array. I'm going to do array 5. It'll be a 2.7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2.73 uh, terabyte. You know what? I just realized something here. This stupid date is on the camera. How the hell do I get that off? I don't know. Wonderful.
Okay. I don't know how to get that off. Alright. Let me just move this out of the way. There we go. 2.73 terabyte RAID 5. Now I'm going to use this, what's called a RAID Now background initialization. What does that do? If you check this box, which is on by default, once you click Create Array, you can reboot your uh, device here and you'll see the drive pop up ready for use now it's background initialization it will be reduced performance but it should do it so we're going to go ahead and click create array all the drives just flash blue for a second La -de -dee -de -dee -de -dee -de -dee. now the controller is going to restart this one will restart in the background. I didn't hit update yet. Let's just do an update. Ray controller starting up. Now, once this is available, you'll start to see it doing the drive. Like, bringing the drive parity. It's actually starting now. Okay, so real quick, let's just show you. Here we go. See the blue and the green. So it's building the uh, the raid. Now, there we go. Initializing. So on the X serve, once again, I'm just doing a restart. Whoops. Almost did a shutdown. Okay, so we're gonna do a restart. Blam. It's gonna go down for a reboot. Okay. So while this is initializing here, it will be fine in the background. Hopefully, I don't have any craziness okay there's the noise from the X serve restarting I really hope this solves the crazy issues I was having with the controller all these errors it was working but it wasn't fast it was like bursts of speed you'd see the drive like kind of queuing up the blue light would be on on a single drive not evenly across the raid, like the parity was all screwed up, and then you get all these crazy command errors, like I mentioned in my previous video. Okay, so we're coming online now. Let me back the camera up a little bit here. I apologize that this date is on here. I don't know if it is or not, but on my screen it is. Okay, disk insertion, disk you inserted is not readable by this computer. Initialize, this should be the 2.7, you'll see the little XServe RAID right here. So right here, 2.7 terabyte Apple XServe RAID media. And then you just go through your normal partitioning. So I'm just going to do partition, one, I'm calling mine left side you can call it whatever you want I'm gonna do uh, oh look at that install Apple or Mac OS 9 drivers no why would that be because it's an APM so we're gonna do GUID we're not gonna do Apple partition map we're gonna do GUID I guess you could do it it's a power PC so I'm not using this as a startup disk so I just want to GUID so I'm gonna click OK and then that Apple drivers goes away we will click apply and partition and now even though the it's initializing let me show you this real quick see it freaking out usually does it twice second time that's when it's formatting even though it's still doing background initialization okay let's go back to the desktop here all right we're done with the uh, with the format so I can just close disk utility and oh look what I see left side available 2.73 terabyte now there's 500 all the way across the board in there I did take out the uh, 750 moved it over to the upper controller so that's it guys uh, we'll keep an eye on this this is still initializing in the background like I said um, performance will be reduced uh, it just started so these usually take a couple days but with that uh, 
RAID Now technology, you can get to your drive right away and access it. And uh, yeah, it should be good. Now I already had a share for Left RAID, that's why I kept it the same name. We're going to see what drives are available on my XServe now that this is rolling. What did I call it? Oh, i got to reshare it. So, I mean, I could do that if you're running a business or you need something. You can go into uh, Server Manager here. I'm looking through the camera to do this. Alright. So, Server Manager. I'll just do File Sharing. And I'm going to choose left side. And I'm just hitting Share up here. So I'll just hit Share. Spotlight Searching. I don't want it as a time machine. You can do that if you got enough space, but 2.73 terabytes in 2016. It's not really, uh, you know, good. I turn off guest access. I don't know about you. Um, sometimes I do SMB for Windows. I don't do FTP. Make sure you go through these. I don't do NFS. So AFP for Mac, uh, SMB for Windows, FTP if you want to. I don't. Just click share and then save. And then once it's saved and the little swirly down here goes away, you can just close server admin. And we'll go back to the main machine here and see if we can see it. Okay, so we're done there. Let's go ahead and uh, just slide this out of the way. And slide this out of the way. And now we'll just do a connect to my XServe. There we are, left side. Opens right up. Now, this one says 3 terabyte because I think I am uh, El Capitan. Yeah, 10, 11, 6. I haven't made the jump to Sierra on this machine yet. Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, we're back in action on the new drives. Uh, no errors. Minus the RAID controller fiber link up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the event log. Um, I'm not blinking anymore on the uh, on the light. The service ID is off, which is wonderful. Um, this has been operational now for three days, seven hours, and 47 minutes. And that's it. 77 degrees Fahrenheit ambient air temperature. It is a little warm in here. But that thing's a great heater. It's in the basement. And uh, it seems to work out good. So I will uh, give you an update in a couple days when this sucker's finally done background initialization if I have any issues. But I'll tell you what, I notice a major improvement right now with these adapters. So once again, this is the StarTech.com uh, IDE to SAT. Part number is right here. IDE to SAT. Uh, from StarTech, they're $21, $22 US. Um, shipping's normal. I got these off of eBay. Uh, new in box. Uh, you saw me open them up. And uh, very simple. Uh, they're a lot better than these uh, knockoffs, I'll tell you that. So, yeah, if anybody wants about six of these bad boys, yeah, I got six of them. And uh, they're yours. You can have them. I'll ship them to you for free. So you can have the nightmare headache that I did with your XServe Raid. They do work, but they don't work great. So I might just toss them in the trash if nobody wants them. Um, but that's it. You get what you pay for. So I had enough money to do it uh, three times, but not enough money to do it right the first time. That seems to be my common mistake. So next time, I'm just going to bite the bullet and buy the StarTech.com's adapters. And uh, they're... Oh, yeah as I babble on. There is another one of these parts. It's called IDE to SAT2. Don't get that one. That's a 44 pin and a 40 pin. You don't need it. All you need is the 40 to the, the, the regular SATA. The IDE to SAT is just what you need and you can snip off this extra little uh, Molex 4 and use the LP4 that comes with it right to the Apple ADM drive module and you're good. So the other part that I used is a uh, Apricorn USB to SATA adapter for just partitioning my drives to make sure they were okay 
on Smart Utility on my machine before I went through the process of mounting them in the trays and getting everything all squared away and locked down. So that's it everybody. Once again, I uh, hope this helps you in any way, if at all, if it does. Or just for some information, if you're looking for some information on the Xserve RAID, converting it to SATA drives, um, how it's all done. I have a whole playlist on the Xserve RAID. Feel free to watch, comment, like, dislike. That's fine. But as always, I hope it helps you in some way or fashion. And uh, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Uh, thanks again, guys, and take care.